I think it's a good time we could go ahead and start, if that's okay with Dr. Marinho. Yeah, I'm okay. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm in Carolina Marinho, General Surgery Resident, PGI-2. And now let's let's talk so penetrant trauma in the left lumbar region, a challenging case with unusual complication. Objectives of presentation, management of penetrant trauma injuries, debate on complementary exams to identify abdominal injuries, non-operative treatment of penetrant trauma. Pre-hospital care information, 35 years male, reports hypertension, uh, treated with saline solution, uh, blood pressure, uh, 111 over 73, normal cardiac, a victim of stem wound on the back. Initial examination, pelvis away, no neck pain, chest is stable and has preserved expansion. Him Hemodynamically stable without significant active bleeding, painless abdominals and stable pelvis. Uh, Glasgow 15, step wound on the left. A digital exploration did not violate the cavity. Any comments? Dr. Supa, good morning. Any comments? I think uh, because this patient is stable, we can go ahead and uh, give him some fluid and maybe send him for our CT scan. Thank you very much. Dr. Kasim. Uh, the patient is stable. I would do a thorough examination and I would also put a Foley catheter in to see if there is any blood in the urine. And if at all possible, I would also, since he's stable and he's in the trauma bay, uh, perhaps do a chest x-ray as well as a KUB of the abdomen. And to see if we can get the shadow of both kidneys, at least a shadow. And uh, then after that, um, you do a thorough examination. Some people like to probe the bullet wound and the track. I don't do that. I don't like to put finger into the wound because most often than not, it gives me false positive or false negative. But and I know, I do know surgeons who do that. I think what you are looking, what we are, what we would be, what I would be concerned is, as the bullet penetrate, is it stabbing? It's a stabbing. As the knife yeah. penetrated far enough to injure the colon, perhaps even the kidney, and of course, it's very close to the spleen in that area as well. So those are the three things that I would be concerned with. And uh, if I am going to send him to the CT scan, I would request the CT scan be done with contrast, perhaps a triple contrast if it is available, meaning oral, intravenous, as well as transrectal. I think you will get the, big, the biggest yield out of that. But all these are esoteric at this moment, and uh, let's see where we go with that. Thank you. Dr. Ramos, any comments or questions? Hello, good morning. So you want to do the digital expir exploration, right? Any of you, of you would do that? Dr. Kassim, Dr. Untak, Dr. Supa? Sure. No, right? Will you do, would you do a rectal exam? Um, yes, I would. I would do a rectal exam to see if there is any blood. Thank you. Go ahead, Dr. Mourinho. 
found Dr. that. Dr. Untrek wants Dr. to say Dr. something. Untrek. Oh, yeah, and, and, Go ahead, Dr. Untrek. And, yes. And Dr. Hockman uh, didn't get a chance to, to and, and, you know, for last week when we discussed this, um, I, I mentioned that I would do a CT with triple contrast, but Dr. Moraine mentioned that at that time, I guess the supply is uh, is uh, not not uh, uh, totally continuous that they didn't have any, and I I, I take it that that also uh, is that is true for um, conventional contrast, uh, barium or gastrographin. No, we don't have, have we don't have barium or gastrographin. Yeah, we don't have. Okay, uh, yeah, and th that's fine. And then the uh, about the uh, the digital exam. I think that's okay if the, if you could do that without causing the patient too much pain, you know, uh, for to examine uh, if it's an anterior, you know, normally typically they're anterior to examine them. You have to uh, numb up the wound and and then use some retractors and, um, and and then have a look. But I think the digital exam is is uh, uh, significant if it's positive. If you put your finger in and you pulled it out and you had stool all over your glove. You know, then, then you know you'd have your answer, but a negative answer, I think, is not definitive. That that's the issue here, and um, and then if you had contrast, and then if you're in a place where you didn't have a CT but you had a gastrograph, and then I would I would try a fistulagram. You know, put a Foley, blow the balloon up, if the, and and then inject contrast and do a plain film to see where it goes. And then if you get the outline, the coastal outline of the colon, then you have your answer, and you know. Uh, but uh, uh, but I you know the only option here was a CT without contrast, and I would still do that to see uh, which what you would get, and then you don't even have an ultrasound to look for for any abnormalities as well. So all you can do is a CT here or observe the patient. Okay, conduct analgesia CT scan. Time. Next step. Any comments? Doctor on track and comments. <laughs> yeah, you got your answer. So. Um, uh, the uh, you have air tracking uh, along where the area where the presumed uh, uh, the knife wound was, and uh, and that's why you you know you, as you as you did in this case, you didn't simply take a negative exam and said, okay, we're done. And uh, but it looks like there there were air bubbles tracking along the uh, the psoas muscle on the left side, and then the kidney, um, and then it looks like in the kidney also it's. Uh, hard to tell, but um, that would be enough to um, give him, uh, uh, you send your labs off, give him antibiotics, you do your exam like Dr. Kasim said, and, um, and then I would uh, explore him while he's in good shape. Um, but that, that's what I would do in this case. Dr. Hodgman, any comments? Uh... Well, a few things. Um, I wouldn't do a digital exploration in this patient. I would have started there. Um, digital exploration, we used to do them for anterior abdominal stab wounds, and it was to check for peritoneal penetration. Any other area, the checks, the chest, the back, uh, you can get into trouble by doing a digital exploration. Suddenly you can, and I have seen this happen, that the bleeding starts and suddenly you need to rush. It's not bleeding. 
digital exploration, as Dr. Untra correctly pointed out, it doesn't, if it's positive, yes, but if it's negative, you don't rule out anything. I really like the idea of the fistulogram that Dr. Untra mentioned. I haven't done it, but I will think about this if I have a case like this in the future. Triple contra CT is always recommended. I have to say I stopped doing it because it really the rectal contrast never reaches anywhere. So the plain CT will give you usually enough information like it is in this case, ideally with IV contrast, but if you don't have it, that's fine. Um, there's another reason we don't do the digital exploration anymore. This guy was a stab, you don't know with what. We have a case, the patient was stabbed with glass and pieces of glass were in the anterior abdominal wall and nobody got cut just by chance. So I stopped completely the digital exploration. So you have air around the colon and around the, um, the psoas. You don't know where it's coming from. Um, it could come from the colon or it come from outside. My guess is probably outside. So you have two options. Either you explore the patient or you can do a colonoscopy. If you do a colonoscopy and you see blood in the colon, you have your answer, you convert to a laparotomy. If the colon is intact, I would assume the air came from outside and wait um, and see what happens. Um, granted that I usually had the advantage of having IV contrast for the CT scan and you don't. So it's a little bit more uh, troublesome to wait. Uh, so if any doubt, just go ahead and explore. Thank you. Dr. Epstein. Can you hear me, Dr. Epstein? You just put in a comment. That's where you guys always end up finding it, that's what they call the rear of tax terminal. Yeah. Yes, I guess he's having problems. So go ahead, Dr. Mourinho. Okay. Conduct, non-operative treatment of penetrant trauma, occlusive with dressing, hospital discharge. Any comments? Just, just one comment before you freak out, as I did uh, <laughs> when I found it out. Uh, we have several types of surgeons in our service and not all of them are trauma surgeons. We have this difficulty in Brazil especially in Rio. So we need people, but it, it is really hard to get good people to work with us. So we've been trying to create uh, uh, protocols so that type of stuff doesn't happen again. Dr. Kasim. Well, when you have too many cooks like this, you know, it always is difficult. And, uh, but you have to go by science. And what does the science say in a case like this? Either you take the patient to the operating room or you do a conservative treatment as uh, Dr. Gorino has, um, has outlined. But if I were, in charge of this particular patient, I probably would not send them home, you know, do a dressing and send them home. At least I would do some period of, some period of observation, either whether it is 24 hours or 48 hours, most likely 48 hours, to see what uh, is going to transpire in the next 48 hours to see if he's going to tell me uh, something more that, uh, more than that, because once you send him home, and then you have lost control of the case. So that is my advice here. Yeah, I think you you're yeah you're able to join us, Dr. Epstein. 
I am. Uh, sorry, I wasn't counting on uh, making a comment, but I, I have done fistulagram with uh, some contrast in the past. It's not uh, been particularly great, but it's better than nothing if it's positive. And I would not do a digital exam of the uh, track because at least you can sometimes, sometimes follow it on CT. If you put your finger in it, you've destroyed the anatomy. And so you, you don't really get anything out of it. Okay, go ahead, Dr. Marino. Okay. He entered 30 hours later, diffused abdominal pain, sweaty, fever, presence of feces in the stab one location. Uh, blood pressure is normal, uh, tachycardic, um, normal conduct. Any comments? Dr. on track? Yeah, I, it sounds yeah. like. Um... The, the surgeon that saw him that not, not in this case, maybe not too many cooks, in, in, one more cook might have reduced the chance that he would have been sent home. But um, I, I'm guessing that he looked at the CT scan and said that it was unremarkable. And um, uh, perhaps, yeah, Dr. Ramos is shaking her head. And, and the other point is an excellent uh, point about introducing the, the air and, uh, and then also doing a colonoscopy. That had occurred to me last week, anticipating what this case was going to show. But um, and, and then about the air, um, you know, if there was a doubt, you know, because of the digital exam, you could observe him for five or six hours, see if there's more air or less air. And um, I don't know what a radiologist would say if you have bubbles of air coming out, tracking distally along the psoas muscle and then up into the kidney or down into the kidney, you, you know, if that's w w what they would say radiologically, what the, what's that, that, that's more consistent with. But it, it's unfortunate, I'm guessing the outcome was still good in this case. So, you know, uh, I hope that the, uh, that surgeon, when you spoke to him said, okay, yeah, I see this, you know, I haven't, you know, don't have enough experience next time I'll know better. Doctor, Doctor so we, we don't have a 24 seven uh, radiologist. And mm -hmm. when it's in the middle of the night, sometimes the surgeons think, they assume, they know how to see a CT scan and they don't ask for opinion. We have that problem too. Dr. Supa, any comments? At this point, I think the patient needs uh, exploration of his abdomen, the laparotomy. So I, I will send him to the OR with uh, no further investigation. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Dr. Marino. Okay. Conduct analgesia, my lab report, CT scan, and operation room. This is the second CT scan. Any comments for our CT scan? Why? Why did you do a second? Why did you do a second CT scan? Do you want the real uh, answer? Say that again. <laughs> because do you want I the didn't real, hear you. Do, do you want the real answer? Yes, real because answer. It, because it's there, it's easy. That's why. Any further you comments? Have feces in the, you have feces in the wound. What more proof do you need to do a <laughs> CT scan? Yeah. Is it, it, it's a waste, it's a waste. Yeah, and I think such things should be, such should be, should not be allowed to happen. Thank you. 
Doctor Ramos. Okay, go ahead, Doctor Marino. Okay. And then operation room, exploratory laparotomy, um, for grand steps, inventory of cavity, no free fluid, no visceral injuries, retroperitoneum, uh, exploration, purulent content, two prenatation lesions in the sending column, segmental colectomy, descending column, more uh, sigmoid, creation of colostomy Hartmann procedure, Abscess pistolas, retroperitoneal drainage with Blake 19, uh, closure of abdominal wall. Any comments? Dr. own track. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, the, the only, uh, the, the consequence is that, you know, had you operated that, that first uh, night when the patient came in, or at least had he not been discharged or keep until the morning, wait till pass him off to the next team. Then you look at the x-rays together and somebody was said, oh my goodness, he's got gas bubbles. Then maybe then repeat the CT scan, show more air and then take him right to the operating room. You might've been able to do a segmental resection or a segmental resection or simple repair of the lesion if there'd been no, no uh, stool soilage. So in this case, uh, this gentleman has the Hartman procedure, second operation with the, whatever the risks of the second operation are. So that, that's the consequence and, and um, uh, in this case, but uh, you know, you, this is what you found. And I think if there's a lot of fecal soilage, you don't have much of a choice. There are of course other options you can do a segmental resection, anastomosis, proximal diversion, you know, that kind of a thing, but, but uh, certainly uh, appropriate what, what you did in this case. And, and I'm sure it was done by a different surgeon the, the second time, I, I imagine. Yes, yes, okay. Thank you, Dr. Ontrack. Dr. Hodgman, any comments? No, I, I agree with Dr. Supa. This patient needed to go straight to the operating room and uh, when he came back, um, and Dr. Uh, Untrak summarized everything perfectly. This patient, if he would have gone to the operating room immediately, <clears throat> was a candidate for primary repair of a small colonic injury. He was not in shock. Probably the injury was not too big or not involving big segment of the part of the circumference. So it could have been a candidate for the primary repair. When you go two days later, you cannot do it. You have to do a resection and um, primary anastomosis and a diverting loop ileostomy is an option. Depends on the conditions of the patient. Harman is the other option. Um, Harman is more complex to reverse. The diverting loop ileostomy is much easier to reverse. It can be done, but it all depends on the local conditions and and what you find when if the patient is in shock or not by the time you're in the OR. Many of these patients are okay until you go to the operating room and you start digging around the abscess and suddenly they become septic for bacterial translocation. So it's not uncommon that this patient looks totally fine, you take it to the operating room and in the operating room they start developing all these signs and symptoms of um, septic shock and that limits your ability to do a primary anastomosis, but that's, that's all, thanks. Go ahead, Dr. Bernino. Can okay. I make a comment? Absolutely, go ahead, Dr. Cassini. Well, I'm an uh, old school surgeon and this is exactly what I was taught to do in a case like this. But the current thinking is quite different from what I was taught. More and more literature I read says that in an extraperitoneal injury to the colon, it's um, quite okay to go ahead and do a resection with the primary anastomosis with or without lupiliostomy. I think they are not very much in favor of doing Hartman resection because Hartman resection uh, is fraught with uh, difficulty uh, converting into back to normal GI tract uh, continuity at a later date. 
and the surgeons, uh, the young surgeons, young, the younger ones now, are uh, much more aggressive. And uh, in a case like this, uh, where they would definitely go ahead and do a uh, resection and, uh, and anastomosis with our tocteliostomy, especially for a retroperitoneal injury of the colon and a thorough washout at the same time. Thank you. We have a question, and I don't know if you were able to see it. Um, it's from Dr. Grossi to everyone. If you have in the same case, colon and left bleeding kidney stab, what would you do? Dr. Ontrak? Uh, well, yeah, so it's a typical, so it's a zone, um, uh, zone two uh, penetrating wound. So, um, you know, normally you explore those, but in this case, um, they uh, they had done an exploration, mobilized the, uh, the the left colon, and made the findings they did. And I I think they would have in the process had there been a stab wound through the left kidney and then into the colon, they would have seen that. So uh, you know they may have seen uh, the hematoma, heterotus uh, uh, capsular drotus fascia, you know within within drotus fascia, and then if it's uh, if it were expanding and he was still bleeding, then he would have come to an operation probably on the first admission. But, uh, uh, you know, in general, they need to be explored, but that was part of this operation. So presumably, you you know, the, the retroperitoneum otherwise looked okay. The, the Gerotus capsule and the kidney on the left side was, was all right, as far as you found. Thank you. Dr. Supa, any comments? Uh, for, for the bleeding left kidney uh, and colonic stab wound, we stop the bleeding first. Uh, you can do whatever you can to stop the bleeding from the left kidney. You can repair the kidney or you can uh, just do the nephrectomy in massive bleeding uh, from the left kidney. And then we deal with the colon later. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Dr. Mourinho. Dr. Epstein wanted to comment. I, I was just wondering if you would operate uh, and right away when the patient came in to explore, what incision would you use? Would you use a transverse incision over the area or would you go midline? Just wondering uh, from my you, colleagues. You, uh, these cases is always a midline. I'm, I'm talking about the original operation. Uh, let's say you decided to explore the patient. And a midline incision because yeah. you never know what you're going to find. Yeah, um, I, I, had, I had a chairman, and I don't want to go too far, Dr. Lou uh, Del Garcio, way back. And he was a big uh, proponent of transverse incision. And that's why I ask. I realized that that most surgeons would make a midline incision and mobilize mobilize the colon. Just wondering. Yeah, you don't know where where this is. I, I have done plenty of transverse incisions in in elective surgeries, but in an emergency, the midline incision give you access to everything because you don't know what you're going to find. Um, this could have, uh, and, and I have seen this, that you go there and suddenly you find an aortic injury or a iliac artery injury and you don't have access uh, based on that location. Um, you can have, uh, I don't know, uh, an injury to the ureter and you need to mobilize uh, things to be able to repair the ureter if it can be repaired. So the Milan incision is so versatile and um, that I don't think that in a case like this, particularly when you don't have a clear diagnosis because the CT scan was not diagnostic, that you can do any other type of incision. Um, regarding the bleeding kidney, assuming that there was a bleeding kidney, um, one, what I would do in those cases is, is like a modified Mattox maneuver because not, not to access the aorta, but it will give you access to the kidney, very good access to the kidney and very good access to the colon. 
And uh, and as Dr. Supa say, you control the bleeding and after that you deal with the colon. Um, but um, that's the approach I would take for this type of injuries. I will mobilize the spleen, the, the, basically take out the colon in the white line, mobilize the spleen laterally and do a medial visceral rotation. And that will give you a good exposure of all the structures in that area. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to comment? Dr. Kassim, uh, I know you said that Hartman procedure and is something that old people used to do. They're all young surgeons. Saturday and Sunday, that's all we have, young, young surgeons, people who just finished their residency. And they don't do anastomosis. They don't do anastomosis? No? No, they don't. No. If, if there's an infection, if there is stool, they won't do it. They would do a heart procedure. Just like I was taught to do when I did my residency. They're not, they are bold enough to try an operative management for a staff room, but they wouldn't do an astrologist. Thank you. Um, go ahead, Dr. Marie. For superlative care for big steps, antibiotics, ciprofloxacin uh, uh, plus metronidazole, stable sinus, stable vital signs, pain management, and monitoring for complications. Hospital stay, stay um, three days, fast track on diet, motor physiotherapy, and lab reports, and show best uh, and w and uh, white blood cells. White blood cells. Yeah. Thank you. Any comments? Dr. Kasim? And the antibiotic management, old school, and uh, I think in colonic injury, you need to keep in mind that you may have enterobacter, and uh, sometimes you have to add ampicillin or something like that. But it is acceptable what you have done. Dr. Hodgman? Um, yeah, uh, antibiotic treatment has to cover gram negative and anaerobes. Um, I will treat this patient for four days and see what happens. Uh, there are some papers saying that you can treat, make shorter treatment if the patient is afebrile and has normalized the, the white count. Continue antibiotics for longer period of time do not does not decrease the incidence of abscesses. It just only delays the presentation. So otherwise, really not too much to add. Thank you. Doctor on track. Yes. Yeah, so I, I recall you left the drain. The type of drain you left. I, there was a name I didn't know, but you, there was a drain, wasn't there? Yes. And then, uh, so yeah. how, is it, how long did you leave it in? Normal drainage. Uh, oh, uh, seven days. Oh, seven days. Seven days. Seven days. Seven days. And there was there was no drainage, and he was afebrile and back to normal, right? Yeah. 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 So you, you know, the the only harm done was that he has to wear a colostomy for six weeks or so, and. Uh, uh, it, it, you know, and uh, but otherwise you handled it well. The first, and it was a different team that came and saw the, the problem. Right, it's easy when a patient comes back and it's obvious. Uh, but the, you know, it, it's uh, the, the the first surgeon made a mistake. It's always a good idea, even if I think, you know, I know what what to do. I always run it by a colleague, you know. But especially if you're going to send somebody home after a stab wound. And, um, uh, you know, or at least wait till the morning till the radiologist comes in. 
And it's, you know, it's, and you, you, you're short of surgeons, you need surgeons. So it's important that everyone learn. And uh, the, the policy that was adopted in the States, I think you do it also is forgive and remember, you know, just, you know, just watch for next time. And if, if it's repetitive and the person is not interested, well, then maybe you should do elective surgery and not the, the emergencies, you know, you have to, you know, uh, I mean, you don't have enough surgeons and everyone has to learn and do better, but, uh, uh, but an interesting case. Any other comments? Go ahead, Dr. Martinez. Okay. Thank you for your time. I'm very happy to stay here today. Um, so. Uh, Dr. Grossi has a question in the chat section. Does it make a difference if more than 50% of the colon is involved in the initial injury for a primary repair? And probably yes, uh, usually it has to be less than 50% of the circumference. The patient has to have clean edges and the patient does not is not in shock to do a primary repair. If it's more than 50%, uh, if I do a primary repair, I will probably do a diverting ostomy. But it all depends on the circumstance. It depends how it looks, but uh, technically we shouldn't be doing it. I don't know, Dr. Untrach or Dr. Kassim, do you have a different opinion? Or Dr. Supa? Supa, Dr. Supa. Uh, uh, if you detect a chronic wound very early, and there's no contamination. I think you can you can repair almost everything in step wound. Uh, and if you think repair is not safe, you can just resect it and uh, do the primary anastomosis. It's okay to uh, when when you detect the step wound to the colon at the very early time. And ostomy can be used uh, when you are in doubt. Uh, but usually, if I decide to do the anastomosis. I usually don't do uh, protective, the uh, diverting ostomy. But if I'm not happy with the repair, I would do what you did. I would just uh, resect the colon and uh, do the heart band procedure. Thank you. Anyone else? Well, there's a difference between management of stab wound and gunshot wound. We will not talk about the gunshot wound. When it comes to stab wound, it is relatively benign as opposed to the gunshot wound. You have the luxury of uh, trimming the edges and doing a primary repair. Uh, if you catch it early without contamination, like Dr. Hoffman says, patient is not shocked and you have not used up a lot of blood product, et cetera. Um, but I think, uh, the, the tide is turning to, uh, towards primary repair more and more and less Hartman procedure. And uh, there is a lecture by a professor of surgery from Yale University in Connecticut, which is available to watch uh, on, I don't know where it is, but if I find it, I'll send it to Dr. Ramos. And she has, she gave a very good lecture on this where they employed primary as a primary mode of treatment in cases like this. And uh, it didn't have a lot of complications as opposed to doing a heartburn procedure. Heartburn procedure is, is it's a good operation, but it's time has come for it to be put to bed according to this particular professor from Connecticut. Thank you. Uh, two quick comments about the Harmans, um, or three, uh, a little bit of trivia. I, I'm pretty sure it was Oglesby during World War II that recommended in the British Army uh, in North Africa to do colostomies for all colonic injuries. And after that, 
it came um, a directive by the Surgeon General that if in the US Army, the patients who have colonic injury needed to have a colostomy to the risk of being court martial. But the funny part of the story is that of obviously patients, the patients that had the colostomy had worse outcome, but nobody went to that. So that question of using colostomy all the time for colonic injuries is questionable from the very beginning. Uh, two things with the colo with the Harmans. Um, one, if you have a short stamp, a recommendation is to put some uh, number one proline stitches at the end and make several knots. So it makes easier to find the stamp when you go for the reconstruction, because otherwise everything looks the same. And two, if it's a long stamp, what I tend to do nowadays is to leave the stamp at the end of the laparotomy in the subcutaneous tissue. I don't create a mucous fistula, but with a long stamp, you have the risk of leaking, the stamp leaking. And if it leaks, it will leak on the subcutaneous tissue, will create a small abscess, I open the skin and drains very easily. And it makes it easier to find it when the time of the reconstruction comes. So those two, two, two little tricks uh, to help with the reconstruction, because as Dr. Kasim say, it's very difficult to reconstruct particularly in elderly patients. One third of elderly patients choose not to undergo reconstruction because they got used to the colostomy by the time that this is over and they don't want to go through different uh, surgery, major surgery. So those are two, two little tricks. Thank you. Any further comments? Uh, the patient was, oh, yeah. I, I just want to say it's too bad that Dr. Calais wasn't here. His residence probably would have taken this patient to the operating room and then, then repaired the, uh, the, 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 the injury to the colon laparoscopically, and he would have been sent home by morning rounds, but only because they're done with the operation. He would have, you know, see him back in clinic just uh, yeah. to say hi. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. The patient was seen two, twice uh, ambulatory. Yeah, it was good. Uh, and uh, a Hartman procedure uh, is reverted next next for for three months. Uh, Dr. Ultrak, our residents are not as free to do whatever they want. <laughs> uh, we have a problem with the surgeons in here. They're too pride of themselves. So they don't listen to the residents. We're trying to change that. So they do learn what it's right to be done. They talk to the surgeons and usually they're like, Hey, I'm the surgeon here. I know what I'm doing, and I'm going to do that. So it's yeah, the, the, res the resident says that. The resident talks back to the attending. No, they uh, they try to tell them what's the right thing to do, mm -hmm. and usually they don't listen. They the, do the what attending they, doesn't. Yeah, they do what they want to do. Yeah. Oh, I see. Uh, to, uh, to give you an idea, that trick of leaving the colon and the subcutaneous tissue, I learned it from a resident who learned it from another attending. So you never stop learning. Always take, listen to the idea, if it sounds like a good idea, whatever, at least research it afterwards, but never, it's, 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 and I always say the residents are there to help me ab avoid mistakes. So you always need to listen to the people working with you. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to Dr. Mardino. Thank you for coming back. Again, I apologize for the incident last week, and I am so glad you were able to do it today. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. See you soon. You have the CME code? Yes. I sent it in on the chat, but I'll go ahead and give it to you. It's 1145. Okay.
1-7. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. See you next week. Bye.